All right, good morning. My name is Bill McLaughlin. Um, been in karting for a long time. My dad got me addicted to this back in the, the early 60s. Uh, it's been a passion of our family for a long time. We are heavily involved right now with Top Kart. Top Kart is an Italian based manufacturer that manufactures go karts on the competition side. Uh, they've been doing it for years and years and years. Um, we're excited to be partnered with Purdue University on the MSTEM program. We think it's a very neat thing and a great direction for go-karting to go as a whole. Uh, the learning uh, that you guys will get and be exposed to is amazing. So once again, we're extremely excited to be partnered with Purdue and Danny and the whole gang. So uh, once again, my name is Bill McLaughlin and if we could take a moment and everybody just say your name and where you're from. Good sir. Okay. I'm Tristan Jones from Purdue. Good sir. I'm Cole Erty. I'm from Purdue. I'm Mario Cadioni from Purdue. Very good, Mario. Tyler Salzman, uh, Carroll High School. Very good. Ice Langston, Carroll High School. Very good. I'm a Bell Spending, Carroll High School. Very good. Doug Owen, Ben Davis High School, Area 31. Very good. As Miles, Harry Christian, Minneapolis. Lisa Foster, Terrence Christian. Hi, Lisa. Danny White. Very good. Joe Walker, Very good, Joe. Very good to meet you. Very good, gentlemen. Uh, we put together a very small book. This is not basically an assembly guide, but it is things that are going to be very important to you guys to know. It's about carding in general, a little bit about our company, um, tools that are, you're going to be needing to assemble a go-kart, and today we're going to actually go through the assembly of a go-kart as it would look like in the box, out of the box, and how you assemble it. There'll be, I think, four stations that we're going to have uh, talking about simple things like installing an axle to uh, aligning the go-kart and measuring swing and toe and caster and camber. Um, go-karts may look um, to some people as a very simplistic tool or toy. Um, but they're very unique in the fact that there is no spring, there's no way, the suspension is basically built into the tubing. So the way the cart turns actually um, is your suspension. Uh, Italians say three wheels good, four wheel is bad. So you're always ultimately trying to get a wheel to lift up on a go-kart to rotate around a corner. So some of what you're gonna see today is pretty neat stuff. Um, I encourage you to take lots of photographs I think within the next month we should have most of this stuff online that you'll be able to click and go back and review if there's any questions. The videos that we're doing today, we are recording everybody, so just let you guys know, these will be posted hopefully by the end of the week. They'll be in raw format, so I'll just put the entire session on there so you might scroll through it, but eventually we'll edit it into real quick. The, the idea here is that there's no questions that are silly. Um, it's all new to most of you maybe and, and possibly um, some of you it's old hat to. But <clears throat> the big thing here is that we want you uh, to be extremely comfortable with us and our product. We're extremely vested in the program. So I, I can tell you from you know, our family, we want nothing but the best for you guys and you guys to succeed. So going forward, uh, if you look at page two, or actually it's page four, it starts about some tools that are required. Um, you can get tools anywhere anymore. Um, I was in Dollar General not too long ago. Not there's anything wrong with Dollar General, but they happen to have a whole tool set for five bucks, and there's like 63 pieces in there. I, I doubt seriously if that's going to be good enough to do what you want to do on a go kart. It doesn't take a lot of tools, but I encourage you to buy a higher quality tool. You don't want to round a bolt off on a go-kart because there's very few people that will have grip circs and easy outs and tap and dies at a racetrack. So uh, I encourage you once again, you know, Craftsman, Fine, you know, any place that you can go and readily exchange that tool for another one is your best bet. There are some specialty tools required on a go-kart. You don't have to have all of these, but they make your life a lot more um, pleasurable. 
The first thing that you're going to need to buy is a 35 millimeter, excuse me, a number 35 chain, chain brake. The chain that your go-kart will run is uh, number 35 chain. Sometimes they come with a master link. Um, not the best solution for go-karting. The chain needs to be cut, broke, and then put back together. And this tool allows you to do that. It's a very inexpensive tool. Approximately, what are we looking at on a chain brake? Seems like they're under 20 bucks, aren't they? Yeah, you can get some, they, I mean, they range. There's some that are 20 bucks and, and some that are obviously better, just like what Kim's talking about, that maybe 60 bucks, but within a, that price range. A chain aligner. Uh, it can be a laser, or it can be something as simple as a flat edge that you would take against the gear and against the sprocket on the engine. Alignment of the chain is very critical on a go-kart. It can't be off very much, otherwise the chain will throw itself. As the cart is being driven, the chassis is flexing left to right, forward to back sometimes. If there's any uh, misalignment in there, you're probably going to lose a chain. I watched some go-karts that were at um, Newcastle last year, and several of them didn't make very many laps because a chain, in fact, did fall off. The alignment is crucial. Um, so those two tools are really important. A brake bleeder. You have, this is one you have to buy. Um, our master cylinders are somewhat unique, and the way you bleed a brake is gravity fed. So we have those available. Once again, they're not very much money, but it's a very important tool that you have to have or you can buy and share, however that works. But they're under 60 bucks, I think, $79. A good tire pressure gauge. Um, not a pencil type that you used to see the guys put in their pocket. It has to be either a digital or a, uh, something that sweeps so that you can get the exact tire pressure. Tire pressure on a go-kart is very critical. A half a pound sometimes will be three and four tenths on a racetrack. Um, any more modern go-kart tires run very little air. We typically, on a race day, we run between seven to nine PSI. Um, when we go out to qualify, sometimes we'll run 11 because we want the tire to heat up quicker. So having a very accurate gauge is somewhat important if you want to do well. Um, and once again, they can be bought pretty much anywhere. Those are the things I think that stand out that you probably should buy. Um, on the next page are some components of the go-kart. Under the chassis, these are things that if you go to the racetrack, bump a barrier, bump another go-kart, you're probably going to want to have a few of these. And Blake's going to hand these up. You want to have spare tie rods, a left and a right tie rod. It's basically what controls your steering from the steering wheel out to the spindles. On the end of those things is called a heim joint. It allows it to move up and down, in and out. You want a left and a right of those as well. Right and left spindles. Our spindles are made pretty well. I mean, you really have to, to not be paying attention <laughs> to damage them, but it does happen. Uh, you may want to have a spare one of two of those around. Steering shafts. These are built to bend. It's a safety feature of a go-kart. Um, you tap something very hard, you're probably going to bend the steering shaft. If you bend it, the Ackerman in the go-kart goes crazy. Um, it's one of the most crucial things on a go-kart, is having a completely straight front end on a go-kart. So an extra steering shaft is a good item to have in your toolbox or your toolkit when you go to the track. Brake pads, depending on how you drive. Um, we have some drivers that, that We'll go four races on a set of brake pads. My daughter goes four sessions on a brake pad. Um, it just depends how hard you are on the brake. So those are things that you want to pay attention to. And once again, if you're traveling somewhere to do a test day or to a race, you want to make sure that you do have those spares. We're always a day away should you need something. And we're going to be at probably 90% of the events until we start going a little wider uh, across the continent. Um, so those are the minimum items that I think you'd want to have as spares. Number 35 chain, it's very inexpensive chain. 
Uh, chain does wear out, especially if you forget to put chain lube on it. Um, it doesn't take long and it'll get blue and it'll be junk. Throw it away. You can't save it. Gears. Front driver on the engine, rear driver on the, the sprocket. Um, having a good selection of those. The neat thing about the rear gears is they're very inexpensive. The bad thing about the front drivers on the motor is they're stupid expensive. I don't know whoever come up with that program, but that's nutty. Um, so having maybe three or four on the top and a good selection on the bottom would be a good way to start. Metric bolts, all top carts are metric in design, so the, all the bolts on the top cart are going to be metric. The funny part is the motor is a foreign motor, but uses SAE bolts. So now you're going to have to have a one or two nine sixteenths and a half inch probably. Uh, nylocks, safety clips, these are things that typically fall off or you'll misplace them when you're doing something on a go-kart. It's a good idea to put them on. They're there for a purpose. Um, I'll be honest with you, we don't, but we're ignorant. Um, you need to put safety clips on a go-kart, so have a few, and they're pennies, they're really inexpensive stuff. Carting terms, and we'll get into this towards the end of the day. These are things that you're going to hear if you go to a racetrack. Uh, most of you probably know them. I try to define them in simplistic terms. Um, you know, if you're turning the go-kart and you're going to hit a wall, that's a push. Things aren't working well. If you're turning the wheel and the back end is coming out, you, know, you have to counter steer it, loose condition, um, oversteer, understeer. Those are things that you're going to have to learn, and if you know them, fantastic. If not, I've listed them in here. Finally, there are some tips that I gave you. Um, some of these are pretty simple. Some we've learned through the years. Um, when you set your caster and camber, for example, you've got it perfect. You know you're going to win the race, and then you put your 140-pound driver in it. I can guarantee you it will not be the same. The go-kart will flex, everything moves in. So you want to be playing with that a little bit as you're setting up your, your caster and camber measurements. A seat, very important in a go-kart. That's basically what rotates a go-kart, is your, your grav center of gravity. If you have a real tall driver, would the seat be higher or lower? It would be lower, of course, right? A short driver, you want the seat higher to get more roll. Um, so seat position, very critical. Drilling a seat, they are fiberglass. The more holes you put in them, the worse the seat becomes. Um, so we're very adamant about once the seat starts to crack or you've taken it across a couple curbs, uh, rumble strips, there's a point in time where the seat is of no value to you. You can reglass it, but it won't have the same effect on the go-kart it did as a new seat. So the fewer holes you put in it, the better off you're going to be. Uh, Danny, are we putting weight? Are we going to have a minimum weight on the carts? Do you have you established that? We have it so far. But okay. To, but it, if you get to that point and you have to start adding ballast, obviously you put most of the ballast on a seat. It makes the most sense because that's where the driver sits. You don't want it hanging on the left side or the right side. You want it right in the center of the go-kart. But again, you're adding weight to it, and if it's not snug down properly, that 5 or 10 or 15 pound weight starts digging a hole in that fiberglass. So when you get to that point, seat um, installation, I think Marco, Marco, put your hand up. Marco is our Italian driver from Italy and our international driver. Um, he's very little. <laughs> he's... <laughs> That's how we grow them in Italy. Over here, we grow them much better. Just kidding, Mark. What's the uh, seat cost, the new seat? Blake, the new seat. What, do, what does the new seat cost? Um, I believe they are about 120 bucks. How much? About 120, 120 bucks. And, and it's not something that you're going to use all the time. It just, they don't wear out that like that. But when they do start to go, the go-kart will not have the same effect. Um, and I, I, I stress this because we're on the competition side, 
and I always tell my drivers, go-karting is fun. It's probably the funnest thing you'll do, even as an adult, it's like a time machine. Um, but if you want it to be competitive, everything has to be spot on. Uh, it's the, Derek Daly used to drive me nuts about the devils and the details. I mean, it's just that clear. Everything's got to be perfect. So when you get 30 holes in it and your driver says, hey, guess what? It's not coming out of the corner. Okay. It doesn't take a rocket science to figure that out. The, the seat's just folding over on itself. So uh, once again, the way you drill a seat, we're going to kind of show you that today. There's a little secret in there about a flashlight. Um, they're going to show you how to tape it. All that good stuff. Chain tension. Um, this is probably my, my pet peeve. Um, if you can play a tune on that chain, <laughs> like a banjo, it's too tight. Because a go-kart will flex, and it's only going to draw the horsepower out of the engine, and you're going to go slower. You're going to overheat the chain. Eventually, you'll tear up the sprockets, and it costs a lot of money. They're going to show you how to align a chain, how to set it um, properly for the flex of the chassis. Chains don't typically fall off if they're aligned, even if they're stupid loose. Because at any point in time, three quarters of that chain is still connected to a sprocket. Where they fall off is when they're misaligned. So a real loose chain doesn't necessarily hurt you. It will at some point in time affect torque, but that has to be ridiculously loose. So they're going to show you that as well. Um, and once again, I just want to touch on tire pressure real quick. I, I mentioned about you know half a pound. We go down to the, you know 0.1. I mean it's that critical. Um, the more rubber that a track will get, and I assume that. If we have enough test days at IMS uh, or practice time, that track will start to gather uh, rubber. The more rubber it gets, the more the cart begins to lock down onto the track. The warmer it gets when the sun comes out, the more that rubber gets greasy and then also has a counter effect. It starts to make the go-kart loose. So seat struts, and Blake, you didn't show a seat strut, but um, those are another item that are a good tuning Instead of changing an axle, you can just add a seat strut. And they're, what are they off the top of your head? Okay. So instead of paying $200 for an axle, you pay $23 and you get the same bang for the buck. Um, last thing, test and tune days. I've arranged um, three days, one a month, starting in March, one in April, and then there'll be one early in May. We'll have those at Whiteland Raceway Park. Um, I'm going to wait until most of you guys have your go-karts assembled or you think you can make it and tell me the day. And we'll go that at that point in time. The second one in April and then in May, I will let you know ahead of time. Um, and I'll get those out in an email form. We will be there um, to do everything from finish helping you possibly assemble it to giving you a little bit of driving instruction to um, questions or maybe even messing the go-kart up for you and letting you figure out how to fix that. A loose condition, how to fix that. You know, a cart that's pushing what you want to do. So those are the kind of commitments that we're going to make to you today. Uh, if there's any questions on any of that, I'm going to be here all day, but I'm going to turn this over to the guys that actually do this for a living. Um, I just go and watch. So um, Billy or Blake, 